Okay, hi Year 10s and welcome to today's lesson on how to prepare for and plan your text response essay. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to show you is how to get to your assignment through Teams. So when you sign into Teams, um, you probably start out in posts and it looks something like this and you can see all of our work that we've done today. Now I've set up the assignment tonight so tomorrow or the next day, so depending on whether you're a Thursday or Friday's class, you should be able to see this assignment. So as you can see here, and Caitlin's already seen it, Caitlin, you need to go to bed. Um, as you can see here, um, it's due on April 24th. So if we look at our calendars, today's the 15th and April 24th is next Friday. Though I have allowed late submissions for this. So all you'll need to do on a Thursday or Friday, depending on when your class is, is click on view assignment and it should take you to this page. Okay. And here is everybody. And if we go to student view, this is what it looks like for you. So when you go into your assignment, it'll look like this. I've attached a rubric. This is the same rubric we started using last term, but I've just updated it for this platform. So you can see all of the criteria. So we're going to look at your ability to analyze context and background, your ability to analyze author ideas, your understanding of the text and text evidence, and um, lastly, essay structure and language analysis. Did I accidentally put that in twice? Somehow that's happened. I'll fix that up later, doesn't matter. And you can download that and you can save that onto your computer or you can just keep coming back into the assessment and looking at it. Though if everyone's doing that at once, it might not work. The second thing you can see is I've put two resources here. The first is a video that I want you to watch on how to understand symbols and symbolism. And the second is the document we're going to be working on today. Now, if for whatever reason you cannot get into assignments during class time, because it has been a bit funny today, if we go into files, which is what we've been using, you can see I've put all our grammar work in this folder and we're going to be focusing on this folder on our double lesson. So this will also include next Monday and Tuesday. And if we go in there, you can see our materials. So there's the symbols and symbolism video. So if you can't get that into assignments, you can open it up through files. Um, and if you open it up, I'm just gonna see, I think you might be able to download it onto your computer. So as you can see here, we've got more options. So if we press these triple dots, you can download that onto your computer so you don't have to watch it online and so on and so forth. So we'll just close that. Um, and there are some more materials here that aren't connected. There is a Word document version of your rubric. So if for whatever reason you can't get the rubric on assignments, you can download that onto your computer. Again, just make sure that you're not editing it. So if you press edit, I know the formatting's a little off. If you press edit and it takes you to this page and then you start to fiddle around with it. Let's say I just wanted to delete all this. That would actually delete that for the actual document that everybody wants access to, which means that people would not be able to see that. So don't go into edit. We'll just delete this window. Um, so don't go into edit. Make sure you press on these three dots in the top corner and press download. And then you should be able to download your own personal copy onto your computer that you can do with whatever you want. Okay, and there's some more here. There is an essay template. So this is only for students who need it. So this essay template basically provides a step-by-step -step template for you to type in your ideas once you've downloaded it onto your computer, of course. The problem with that is if you hand me in this template rather than an essay you wrote yourself, you will be marked lower on the rubric. Okay, so let me show you as an example. If we go to the rubric again, if you look at essay structure, which is the second bottom one, if you have to use a template, you get placed at working below year 10. That's because at a year 10 level, the majority of you should be able to write a simple five paragraph teal essay without that kind of template. So that template's only 
there for those who are really struggling. So avoid using that if you can. And then what else have we got here? And then we've got this. And I did want to attach this to assignments, but because I attached the video, I ran out of room. This is an absolute fantastic example of a very high level essay. Okay? And just let's look at the introduction here. To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee explores the themes of innocence and growing up. Lee's Buildings Roman is a tale of prejudice against a black man when he is falsely accused of raping a white woman. The events are related through the eyes of a young girl named Scout Finch, and this influences the manner in which the story is told, and so on and so forth. So I strongly recommend that you go through this section A, perhaps alongside a rubric, and look at this as an example of how to achieve a very high or working above year level standard. So this is the quality I would expect of perhaps a year 11 student. And some of you will be aiming for that level. And so that's important to look at. Okay, so that's all I wanna show you on Teams. At the moment, I wanna focus mostly on resource number two, planning a mockingbird response. And it looks like this. And this is not a template, so do not confuse this, the planner, with a template because this doesn't provide you with step-by-step -step examples of how to write the actual essay. It instead provides you with steps on how to plan the essay, which are two very different things. And as you can see here, it's in this planner that you are provided with your essay topics. And I've given you six to choose from. You do not have to write about all six. You choose one of these six essay topics. Now I'm gonna go over to my Word document of this that I've already downloaded onto my computer. So to download it, remember, press the three dots on the top corner and hit download and save it onto your own computer. I believe I have not allowed you to edit this um, as it is. So do not press edit, download it, and then you can edit it. Otherwise, no one else will be able to access this and you won't be able to, um, you are uh, uh, this in the blank form. Everyone will see your work that you've filled in. Okay, so to the Word document. Here is one I prepared earlier. So once you've downloaded onto your computer, you should be able to do with it what you want. And your first step, your very first step, once you've read through your instructions and why it's important to plan for an essay, is to finally pick your essay topic. So I'm going to pretend to read through all of these. I already know what they say. Um, and I'm going to choose number three, not because it's the shortest, because usually the shorter ones are the more difficult ones because they provide you with less information, but it's the one I've prepared ahead of time. So I'm going to copy that because down here are steps to breaking down an essay question, which in this case it is an essay question, but I should have called it an essay topic. So breaking down an essay topic. So step one, as you can see, is to type your essay topic in the box below. Now I've already copied mine, so I don't need to type it, I just need to paste it. And I'll put that in bold so you can see what's the essay topic and what's the instruction. So step one, type your essay topic here. So there I've got my essay topic, both as a father and a lawyer, Atticus is a failure, do you agree? Okay, so now I need to go to instruction two. And step two says, Define or look up any unfamiliar language or unfamiliar events and characters from the text. So if there's anything unfamiliar, I need to type the definition here. So let's say I didn't know what a lawyer was. I would type the word lawyer and then I would include a definition. So here I might look up some synonyms. So it's an attorney, a notary, a legal representative or a public prosecutor. So we will say a legal representative. Um, and another example could be if I don't remember much about the character Atticus Finch, I might write Atticus here and I might put a little description of who he is. So he's Scout's father and he represents Tom Robinson. Now these questions 
and topics are quite simple. So it's very likely you won't need to do step two and you could leave this block box blank if you already know what all the language means and who all the characters are. But this is an option for you to do if there's anything confusing. Okay, so now we're ready to go on to step three. And this says to underline all the important words and find a minimum of three synonyms for each word or phrase that is underlined. Okay, so I'm going to start with the word father. I definitely think father needs to be underlined. And then we're going to go to the word lawyer. And then we're going to go to the word failure. And I'm going to choose these three as my important or key words. You might choose similar or different. You might also want to underline the phrase, do you agree or both? But I'm thinking ahead and I know that I'm not going to need synonyms for those because I'm not actually going to be writing about that in my essay. This is just a prompt for me to choose my stance, but this is what I'm going to be analyzing. So they're the words that I've underlined. And I'm going to need to annotate three synonyms for each one. So let's start with father. And a good trick would just be to right click and look at the synonyms that Word provides. So I've got dad, um, let's not use slang, so we won't go like pop, we won't use another language. We might say ancestor, and I'm going to choose one just from the top of my head, I'm going to think role model. And another one that I can think of in my head is parent. We might get rid of ancestor, because I don't think I'm going to use that in my essay. Okay, so we've got dad, role model, and parent. The next is lawyer. So we know the kind of lawyer um, Atticus is in this case. He is a defense attorney. So, because he is defending Tom Robinson. Um, again, we can use the right click trick trick and look this up. We could say attorney and we could say legal representative. And then lastly, we want to um, have three synonyms for the word failure. And the importance of doing this and having these synonyms is so we don't end up repeating ourselves every time we're linking back to the topic sentence. And we do that in every T and L sentence. So every topic sentence, we want to link back to this essay topic. And every linking sentence, we want to link back to this essay topic. So we're going to have to use these words and phrases quite a lot. So we've got let down, catastrophe, and we'll say miscarriage, because I think miscarriage works well with the idea of a miscarriage of justice. So we'll say, what have we got? We've got... Um, I forget what I chose. Let's say let down, what did I say? Disappointment, let down, and miscarriage. We'll do that. So we've got disappointment, let down, and miscarriage. And of course, if Word doesn't give you something that you like or you th you're thinking of something else that you want to add in, you can use um, a thesaurus online. Or if you have a thesaurus at home, you can look it up in that. Um, I'll stop playing around with the format. So now we're up to step number four. And step number four is to rewrite the essay topic in your own words. And I've tried to use formal language here saying making sure to simplify it. But what I mean by that is just dumb it down. Even if you want to use your own type of language or your own slang, this rewrite here, step four, is for you. It's really to get your head around what this essay is asking you. So I'm going to say provide three examples because I know I want to have, think of at least three examples because this is a three body paragraph essay of, and I'm going to rewrite this because I'm going to draw your attention to this. This essay topic ends with the question, do you agree? Now every time you see an essay topic end with this question, that means you're provided with an option of to either agree or, in this case, to disagree. So this is saying Atticus is a failure, and I'm going to choose to disagree with that. 
And definitely that would be the most dominant interpretation of To Kill a Mockingbird. You don't have to disagree with this question. I have uh, the sample I've provided you. There is another sample I can provide you that actually argues that Atticus is a failure. So it does agree with this question. And I can put that up if some of you choose to do this topic. But I'm going to say that he's actually a success. So he provides three examples of how Atticus is a successful father to Jem and Scout and lawyer to Tom Robinson. And that question topic, this essay topic, um, it's now in the affirmative and it's actually a little bit longer than this one. And that might happen. When you simplify, it doesn't necessarily mean you'll shorten it. Sometimes that means you'll take complicated or convoluted language and break it down into smaller words. So your essay topic rewrite could end up longer like that, as long as it makes sense to you. Okay, and now step five. Now that I've rewritten that essay topic, it should be really clear in my head. And this is when I can start to brainstorm ideas. I'm going to insert a text box here. This is where I can start to brainstorm ideas for how he is successful. So just to think of some off the top of my head, he teaches Scout to read. We're going to say slash value of learning. Um, he teaches the children good morals. Um, he stands up to Tom Robinson. And we could say he achieved a chance for appeal before Tom is killed. Okay, so there's just four ideas that popped up in the top of my head. Um, you could probably have more because you'd probably give yourselves more time to brainstorm. And once I've done step five, I'm up to the last step. And that's when I would want to look at my brainstormed ideas and I might have only three, I might have 20. If I only have two, I need to think of at least one more because the next step is to pick my three best ones, the three that I like the most. And then is the hardest step. I need to find one to three quotes for each idea. So let me show you how this looks. So step six, you'll actually do down here. And as you can see, I've already collected most of my quotes. So the idea that I like the most is that Atticus teaches his children to read. And teaches them to value an education. And of course, um, that means he's a successful father. That's why I've made that point. Um, number th two, Atticus successfully teaches his children progressive morals. So he teaches them to be humanitarians, basically, to believe in equality before the civil rights movement, which was a big deal. Not many people believed in that beforehand. And then lastly, um, Atticus took on Tom Robinson's case at risk to himself. And he gave it, well, let's not use slang. I was going to say he gave it everything he had. And he exhausted all his prowess to give him the ultimate fighting chance. All right, that's a little wordy, but... I think it gets my point across. So there are my three ideas that I've selected from this brainstorm. And here's most of my quotes. Now, if you think back to the rubric, which I keep regretting closing because I keep talking about it, but I'll get it back up here. If we think back to this rubric and we think of essay structure, um, if we only use one quote per paragraph, 
then you're only going to get a medium, okay, for essay structure. That's because from year 11 and onward, you get marked on an abundance as well as accuracy text evidence, of text evidence. Um, that, that's just because the more quotes you have, it tends to correlate with you knowing the text better. It also makes the essay harder to write. So the more quotes you're filling your essay with, the harder it is to write. And if you manage to do that well, that means you're usually going to be marked higher. So as you can see, um, to get a high or above, you want to be using two or three quotes per paragraph. So I'm really focusing on the lower end of this just because I'm trying to do a quick example. So you can see for my second and third idea, I've collected two quotes. So I've got two quotes here to show um, Atticus teaching Scout the morals of looking at people's perspectives before you judge them. And here I've got two quotes that are meant to exemplify that Atticus gave Tom's case everything he's got and he actually got the case further than most people would have. But as you can see here, I've only got one quote for Atticus teaching his children how to read. Now, I can think of in my head of some vague instances in the book, such as at the end of the trial when Atticus tries to teach Scout a lesson about education and how the education system's letting people down, and at the beginning of the book around um, chapters one to three when Scout has her first day of school and when she comes back, they have a discussion about the importance to go. So I've got some vague ideas in my head, but I don't have any of those quotes written down or memorized. So I want to show you a trick that I would use to very quickly and easily find a specific quote. And that's to go online. So we're going to go online. And you can see here, I've actually got the PDF file that I've gotten some of you to use when you've left your books at home or you've lost your hard copy, copy books. So I'm going to close that and I'll actually show you how to get to it. So if you just go to Google or Bing or your preferred search engine of any kind, all you need to type in is to kill a mockingbird free PDF. And this works best on Google. You might need to look at it a bit further down if you're on a different search engine. And if I type that in, it should, the first few I believe, or at least this one, should be a PDF. So I'm going to open that now. Okay, and then this is the entire To Kill a Mockingbird book. And the great thing about this is it's interactive. If you want to cut, cut, copy and paste any of this, you can. You just need to make sure you quote it, otherwise it's plagiarism. Um, but if I want to find a specific quote about a specific thing, and in this case I'm looking for things to do with education, teaching, learning, scout and Atticus, what I'm going to press is the control key. So if you look at the very bottom left hand corner of your keyboard and the letter F, control F. And I'm going to hold them down together. And as you can see, just up here, a window has popped up. And you can see I've already practiced this before. And I've got the word education here. Education wasn't the first one that I looked at. I looked at the word teach. And you can see teach is mentioned 33 times. And sometimes that's in a word like teacher. So you can see the first result here, our teacher hauled me up to the front of the room. But I want to look at an instance where Atticus is teaching Scout about school and about education. So I'm going to try a different search. Now I'm going to look at school. And you can see here I've got 125 results. So all you can do is you can start to go through each result and you'll hopefully find a quote that you would use before that. If you can think of like part of a sentence as well, and so an example was, I remembered that Atticus said something about being licked, which means being beaten. And he said something about, you need to not give up even though if you're licked before you begin. And I remembered just part of that phrase and I typed in the part that I remembered and that took me to the quote I was looking for. So you can write in more than one word as long as they're in the right order. And we can go through and we can see if there is any quote that we want to use to show Atticus teaching Scout the benefit of education. Okay, 
So here is what I'm looking for, page 16. So she's told Atticus that she didn't want to go to school anymore, if that's all right with him. And she asks, can you teach me like your granddaddy taught you and Uncle Jack? So you, that shows that Atticus was homeschooled. And he says no. And then she talks about not having to go anymore. And then she says that he would force her to go to school. So let's keep going. I'm just trying to find out. I know it's here somewhere. Here we go. I keep reading straight over it. So besides, they'd put me in jail if I, uh, I have to make a living. Besides, they'd put me in jail if I keep home. Um, here we go. Sorry. It's further down the page. If I didn't go to school tomorrow, you'd force me to. So... I'll copy that and I'll paste it in there. Okay, so now I've got two quotes for all my main ideas after that. And as you can see, sometimes it takes a little bit of reading to find the exact one you want. Even though I knew that was on the page somewhere, I couldn't find it for quite a while. So I've got three ideas and I've got two quotes for each idea now. So now I can get to my planning stage. So introduction. This doesn't give me a, a, this isn't necessarily a place for you to write your full introduction, but just to start out with the root of it, which is your contention or your main argument. So just a reminder what a contention is, that is your answer or your response to the essay topic. So my response to this essay topic would be that both as a father and a lawyer, Atticus is not a failure. And so that is what I would write here. Both as a father and as a lawyer, Atticus is not a failure. All right, and then it provides a spot for me to start planning my paragraph. So paragraph one, topic sentence. Um, if you can remember, I don't know if we got, went through it in both classes or just one or the other, but a good topic sentence follows a very simple structure, and that is author plus verb plus idea. So, who is the author? That is Harper Lee. So, in Harper Lee's text, or we would say Harper Lee, because we probably say all that in the full introduction, a verb would probably be a synonym for shows. So, we probably don't want to use the word shows anywhere in the essay. But if you are stuck of a, of a good synonym, then you could just write the word show and look up some synonyms. So we could say, uh, happily displays, happily expresses, happily illustrates. Um, there, those two, three are really good starts. If you didn't like them, you could pick one and then look at synonyms again. So we've got exhibits, presents, demonstrates, parades. P parades probably doesn't work. But let's just keep displays. And then we could say Atticus's success as a father when, ooh, I don't know what that word is, when, and then he can copy idea number one, when he teaches his children to read and teaches them to value an education. So that's my idea one. So that's what I mean by idea. So we've got author, Harper Lee, verb, displays, and then idea which is idea number one. Happily displays Atticus's success as a father when he teaches his children to read and teaches them to value and education. So there is my topic sentence for paragraph one. And we need to make this a little bit bigger now that we're filling it in. If you can't tell, this was originally designed to be handwritten in, but it's adapting quite easily to type. 
Okay, so then it's asking for our examples, which are our quotes further up. Um, and I'm not going to copy and paste them in here right now. You can if you want. You could copy and paste them just to see how it's applied. And then we need an explanation. So I'm just going to go back up and read my quotes. So we've got, I never deliberately learned to read. And basically that he would make them go to school. So our explanation would be Atticus in consistently reading with his young daughter taught her an essential skill and then we could say then we could say that this shows he is a successful father because he is clearly paying her an exceptional amount of attention considering his career and status as a single father. Something like that. So just a quick explanation as to why this is showing us that he's a successful father. And, of course, you could have your quotes there as well. Now, at the moment, and this is a good learning um, opportunity because I've just accidentally started planning my essay to be a base level essay. So this is my actual explanation or analysis that I was writing in my essay. This would not be very high at all. Even though I've said quite a lot and I've, I've spoken quite a lot about Atticus as a character, there's a crucial component that I'm missing. So let's go back to the rubric and let's look at the more analytical. So as you can see, we've got two important bits of analysis that we need to focus on. The first is the author and the second is context. So every time I'm analyzing a quote, I wanna be connecting that to the 1930s context, the fact that this is set in 1930s Alabama, and I also want to be mentioning the author's purpose. So those are two very important things that need to be in every single analysis sentence if I want to be at a medium to very high level. So let's see if I can rewrite it. The first thing that I need to do is every time I write an analysis sentence, I want to mention Harper Lee's name. So I want to say Harper Lee is conveying Again, another synonym for shows, just showing, displaying, illustrating, conveying, portraying. So Harpley is conveying to her readers that Atticus, in consistently reading with his young daughter, taught her an essential skill. This show he's a successful father because he's a, clearly paying her an exceptional amount of attention, considering his career and status as a single father in the 1930s. And that's not the best. I should obviously have tried to put a little bit more about the 1930s, but at least I've got it in there. At least that gets me to a medium. And maybe in paragraph two, I would put a little bit more forethought into the explanation. And I would say, oh, I didn't say much about the 1930s there. I definitely need to say more about it in paragraph two and three. So that's just a simple way if you're hovering around a base in your explanation, just make sure you chuck the author's name in the front of your analysis and put the 1930s, mention it somewhere in there, and that would definitely get you up to a medium. This is two little changes. So we'll leave that there. You would obviously then repeat that with paragraphs two and three, and then you would go down to conclusion. So conclusions will be made up of three sentences. and. We, uh, we might as well go through that now. So your first sentence of your conclusion is <coughs> basically a reflection of your contention. So you go, after writing out your entire essay, you go back up to your essay topic, and you read it, okay, both as a father and a lawyer, Atticus is a failure. Okay, so we're meant to be saying that he's a success in those two areas, and you consider everything you've already written, and you basically rewrite your contention. So you rewrite the argument that you tried to make throughout that whole essay. So we might say, considering all these 
examples. So we're pretending we wrote the entire essay at this point and we've just given three examples. Atticus is clearly a successful, ah, I wrote a D there, well, father and lawyer, not only by 1930s standards, but also by the standards we hold today. Okay, so there I'm rewriting my contention, but as you can see, it has a bit, it's just got a different vibe, it's got a different structure, and it's got a different feel than this very simple, measly sentence. That's because once you've written an entire essay, you probably have a lot more to say. It's a lot clearer in your head, and this is meant to feel like you're wrapping up. That's why we're using words like considering all, and this, this sentence structure, which is not only but also, which is a standard sentence structure that you might use throughout a lot of essays. So that's sentence one of a conclusion. Sentence two of a conclusion is to summarize your three main ideas. So you'd go back up to here where you've got your three ideas, maybe reread them and then you summarize them. That is your second sentence. So as a father, he is a successful educator to his children not only academically, there I go with the not only but also, but also morally. He is also the only lawyer, to, uh, he also, let's say, vehemently defends Tom Robinson at a risk to himself and also successfully um, achieves the chance for an appeal. Okay, so there we go. There's a sentence summarizing those three main ideas. Now, I could leave it there, but there is the option of a third sentence in a conclusion. And that's if you've got something else to say. Now, a tip I'll give my older students, usually in year 11 and 12, is at this point, you want to connect to the broader picture. So let's think about what we know about To Kill a Mockingbird. To Kill a Mockingbird came out in 1960 on the cusp of the civil rights movement. And it reflected a bygone era of the 1930s. So think 1930s, we're talking pre-World War II. A lot of atrocities happened in World War II during the Holocaust and Hitler's regime that ab were abhorrent to the rest of the world. And there was a massive shift in the culture thinking that things like racism and anti-Semitism were appropriate uh, compared to after 1945 when the world no longer thought that was so and it was no longer appropriate to be th that level of racist and discriminatory. So um, this book really came out on the pinnacle of that massive shift not only in America but also over the rest of the world and it's not too far-fetched to say that this book as a piece of media that was widely read was just one of many things that led to a tip, that tipping point. And so um, this would be a great opportunity, depending on what essay topic you've chosen and worked with, to connect your analysis of the book to the impact the book has had on society and how it connected to America's culture in the 60s and just global culture all the way to today. Um, and so a good way to do that is to talk about what do you think Harper Lee's purpose was for this book? Um, and so you could say, Harper Lee intended for Atticus to be a societal role model. Um, and you could say something like in the same way he was to the children, showing 
her readers how to be compassionate for and stand up for black Americans who were being systematically discriminated against. And that's just one example you could put. So just saying, what was Harper Lee's intended purpose for Atticus? Why did she want to show him as a successful father and a lawyer? And what was successful for her? So that's an example of how you could write your conclusion. So that's just a quick rundown. Of course, we'll work in more depth of how to plan for this essay. But if you were to follow these steps, choose an essay topic, and then fill in your planner. There's no reason why you couldn't follow on by typing up your entire essay. Now, I will make a suggestion. Whilst you could open a new document and start writing your essay on that, um, that could potentially provide a problem. What I would suggest instead is that you use a sheet that you've planned and just start a new page, once you've filled it all in, of course, and type your essay on that new page, just like that. Obviously, use actual words. And then you could re-upload your planner and your essay to the assignments tab, as I mentioned, before next Friday, which is the 24th of April. So we'll not only have um, the double at the end of this week, but we'll have two more doubles next week to finish these essays. And that's plenty of time. Next year, when you write a five paragraph essay, you'll be given one double to write that essay in. And you get three doubles, so six periods. And you could do work on this outside of class as well. Um, as you can see, the word limit's 500 words. So it shouldn't be very long at all. Um, and you get to type it up. Whereas in the past, I've got some old students here. As you can see, they had to handwrite them. So very lucky in some ways that you get to do that. Um, we'll c cover more tomorrow. Make sure you start out by watching the symbols. And of course, this video will be uploaded and I'll direct you to watch this. And then you can fill in your planner and start your essay.